we're going to talk uh, parking for a moment. A um, couple terms that are useful to know. Um, uh, one is the parking, typically, if, you're, if somebody says, uh, hey, we've got a 10-car parking lot, uh, you'd say, all right, well, that's somewhere between uh, 3,000 and 4,000 square feet. And I know that because I can use a rule of thumb, somewhere between 300 square feet per car and 400 square feet per car. Uh, when we're talking about parking layouts, uh, the parking lot that, unless there's some very specific reason for you to, to do something different, you will almost always be talking about uh, a 19 by nine, possibly a 19 by eight and a half, possibly a 19 by eight, it depends on the use. If it's uh, cars where aren't going in and out very much, it might be as thin as eight. If it's a place like a, I don't know, a grocery store or Home Depot or something, where cars are going in and out constantly, it might be as wide as 10. Um, but it's gonna be a, a parking space, let's just call it nine feet wide by say 19 feet long, it's supposed to be nine. Uh, and then I've got a drive aisle that's let's say 24 feet wide, and then I've got a parking space again that's 19 feet and the nine feet wide. Uh, so if I add those up, that's gonna be 19 plus 24 plus 19, it's gonna be 62 feet right there. Uh, so my parking lot is always gonna be essentially somewhere between 60 and 64 feet wide. Uh, and then the length of it is going to be however many cars I have divided by two times nine or whichever of those numbers I was talking about. So in a flash, you get a little question, you got something, you can figure out how big this thing is right away. Uh, and there's no reason not to put it into actual dimensions as fast as you can on the vignette. You're going to want to go in and sketch mode and draw it out. In other situations, you want to be able to picture it. Um, but that kind of... Uh, ability to do that very quickly is very important. This is always going to assume um, that this is a two-way traffic. Uh, if it's a single-way traffic, you can actually start getting into uh, angled parking. But I'll tell you, man, angled parking gets very complicated very fast. Uh, and I kind of, other than as a multiple choice question, I kind of doubt that they would ever get into that in any other way uh, on the exam, on the vignette especially. So we have a little parking lot and a building with a building entrance uh, sort of sketched out here. Uh, yeah, take a look at that. What do you think? Uh, what do you like? What do you not like? Well, I'll tell you a couple of things uh, about this. First of all, uh, if, if this was something that I was designing, uh, first of all, I would want to make sure uh, that I had a backup space so that a car, say, in this location, when it was backing up in order to be able to pull out, uh, could do so without uh, bumping into the curb or having any problem. But even more than that, uh, what I really don't like, and from a, the vignette standpoint, you, you absolutely would want to try to make happen, is I don't like the fact that it's a dead end. Uh, so I don't like the fact that I drive in and then I have to drive back out the same aisle. So you're always going to be trying to find a way to, to make it be a through process. Uh, if it's a small one like this, instead of doing what I just sketched there, maybe, uh, maybe I do something uh, along the lines where I have, uh, have it go out to a different street so I have this through ability. Uh, and that allows people to uh, not get uh, um, uh, stuck and so they don't try to do something tricky. Part of the whole thing with parking is you're always trying to make it sort of obvious and simple. Uh, the reason that we uh, always use the same basic uh, drive aisles is you don't want to give a bunch of extra space for people to start parking in the middle. Uh, you want to keep it exactly what everybody expects and make it simple and straightforward. Well, same thing that goes with the, the through. If I can make it as simple as possible, it's going to be much more likely for it to, to work uh, and for people to not have accidents. Uh, okay, what's, a, what's another big problem for the way this thing is drawn? Well, I'll tell you one failing thing on, for both uh, as a multiple choice, but specifically on the, on the vignette, uh, is the fact that the distance from this driveway to this street is way too close. Uh, you can imagine you're driving, uh, driving in a car down the street, 
uh, as you go along. Maybe there's a little confusion. Maybe it's dusk. It's not easy to see. Uh, and you accidentally turn into the driveway instead of turning uh, on the street. Uh, and, oh gosh, what am I going to do? Well, I then back up out into the street in order to go to the correct one. Well, that's incredibly dangerous. Uh, the confusion between a driveway and a street is something that they are very hot about on this exam. Uh, and it's absolutely something that would show up. Uh, it'll show up somewhere written out in some way. And it's because of that basic issue. Um, it's also cars coming around the corner wouldn't have time to turn quickly. And so they would stop and back up and then go. So there's lots of reasons why having that close element there uh, is problematic. So here's one of those moments you start thinking about this and you're like, well, wait a minute, I've seen parking lots and corners like this before. Uh, you know, he's saying that, uh, that that's no good. What's going on there? Well, people got to do what they got to do. They only own the land they own. So there'll be all kinds of places where you actually do something like this. A gas station, for example, is, often has uh, uh, driveways right close to uh, the corners of things. And that's, you know, they have to do it because that's, what, that's the only space they can do it you will always be in a situation where you have more choices. Uh, so watch out for that. Another thing here is what about uh, the handicap spaces? I have them way down here at the end, but the door is way over here. So that seems sort of problematic, but maybe not. What if uh, I have a curb around this whole edge? Maybe there's even a height difference here and I can actually make this zone be the ramp up in order to get to the correct height. At that point, then this is actually a perfectly good relationship for that handicap space. This space over here that I have to go across a drive aisle in order to get to the building, that space will never work. Don't ever do that. Uh, you don't want to do it in real life and you definitely don't want to do it in the vignette. Uh, a couple other sort of quick uh, concepts. Uh, one is the idea of loading. Um, if I have a, a situation like this where I go through that in order to get to say a loading dock back here. So every truck is driving through in order to get to there and then driving back through, that would be a problem as well. You always try to separate loading from, uh, from the parking. You may not separate them at where the driveway actually connects to the street in order to reduce how many uh, curb cuts you have, uh, but pretty quickly you want them to, to get separated. Uh, in the old days, you used to have to think quite a bit about turning radiuses for trucks. These days, they don't really care about it. It's just too complicated for the vignette to get into it. So uh, it's kind of interesting to think about it. it might possibly show up on the, on the multiple choice, but absolutely will not be part of the uh, uh, parking or uh, site planning uh, vignette. Uh, one quick thing to say, uh, anytime I have a driveway coming up to a street, I also have to make sure that I'm leaving open areas, what's called the site triangle, so that people have a chance to see the oncoming traffic before they pull into it. Faster streets, I need a bigger site triangle. Slower streets, I can go with a smaller site triangle.